Hello everybody, MegazardX here, back at it again to give you another very exciting video, and for today's topic, this is one I kind of always wanted to talk about for quite some time though, but have you ever sat down and think, you, you know, you got your Nintendos, your Sonys, and your Microsofts and all of that, and for most people, when games come out with their first party IPs, or it could be third party stuff with Square Enix, Capcom, etc. though, they usually associate all those games that come out with those big major companies though, but have you ever taken the time to sit down and think, what is your favorite game studio? Yes, the, the actual studio, the people that actually work behind and actually make those games. So talking about on the Sony side of things like a Sucker Punch or a Naughty Dog or like a Blue Point, or if you're talking about like Nintendo, you got like Retro Studios as well as your next level games and all of that. Like, have you ever sat down to actually think about all of that stuff? Well, in today's video, I wanted to bring attention to two of my most favorite studios that I personally like, one that's on the Sony side and then one that's on the Nintendo side. That is Insomniac Games as well as Monolith Soft. Because I think for both of those two gaming companies right there with those game studios, they got a big portfolio behind them. And I think both of them respectively have been carrying the PS5 as well as the Nintendo Switch respectfully with the games that they either bring out with them in terms of like games that they develop that's purely from them or even just running it support and stuff. I know Monosoft has been running a lot of supportive games in terms of most of those first party IPs from the Nintendo Switch though. But yeah, that's going to be the major focus in today's video and hopefully you'll be able to learn something from at least these two studios in particular though. But I also want to see in the comment section down below what are your favorite gaming studios as well though but if you hadn't already done so make sure you go and hit that like button go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that bell that way you can stay up to date on anything video game really i feel like talking about and discussing but without any further ado let's go ahead and jump straight into this video All right, so first on the docket, let's go ahead and talk about on the Sony side of things with Insomniac Games, because at least for them, when I've been going through and playing everything, at least since they've recently been acquired and a little bit before that though, everything I've been going through and playing from their portfolio games, I have not had an issue with a single one of them. Maybe that's the Marvel side that's speaking inside of me right now, the big Marvel fan I am, because mostly everything they've been doing has been kind of associated with Marvel, with the one exception being Ratchet and Clank though, at least in recent memory though. That thought aside, everything they've been putting out has been top quality. In terms of like their history and stuff, Insomniac Games, they've been working with Sony in terms of putting things out on there for like the PS2, 3, 4, you know, they, they had a long relationship with them, like a lot of other companies before they usually get acquired though but it wasn't until 2019 that they actually got put into the fold and then being brought into you know the playstation first party studios though because remind you in 2018 that's when the spider-man version for the ps4 came out that was in 2018 and some games didn't get acquired until 2019 so that that's just saying something right there i think they were just genuinely overall impressed to such a high standard along with their already current relationship with that company to where they were like, you know what? We're just gonna go ahead and just acquire you and put you into the fold though. And then since then, they honestly have been carrying the PS5 like, oh shoot, they've been busting their backs out carrying this thing because I have not seen another first party studio besides Insomniac game have that many games put out for the PS5. I know there's been some cross generation games between like PS4 and PS5, but we're just talking about a brand new release, even if it was cross gen or PS5 exclusive. I hadn't seen any other first party studios put out as many titles as Insomniac Games though, but let's go ahead and take a look at their website and let's just go ahead and look at all the things they've been going through and working through. So as you can see right here, everything that they had over here from like Song of the D, Feral Rise, Edge of Nowhere, these are all games I hadn't actually technically gone through and played, like the Unspoken Stormland. I had played a little bit of the Ratchet and Clank PS4 version, hadn't fully gone through it though, but that was all the games that they made before they got acquired, because then when you get over here to Spider-Man PS4, remind you, that game came out in 2018, they got acquired in 2019 though, and since then, the rest has been history, because we had like Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales, that came out in 2020. Uh, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, Memory Serves Me Right, that came out in 2021. 
And then you have Spider-Man 2 that's about to come out right now. Here, sometime in the fall window, I don't understand why they had not gave us a release date for that game just yet. And then obviously they gave us Spider-Man Remastered, which that literally came out the same time of a release with Spider-Man Miles Morales back in 2020 though. But they did manage to put that on PC as well as Miles Morales on PC fairly recently. They actually managed to put those ones out there for a PC. So you can actually play those right now. And then obviously we have Wolverine, which doesn't have like a definitive release date yet though, but we just know it's been in the works cooking right now though. But oh shoot, man. Cause I'm, I mean, between all these different games, they managed to do quite a bit of work with each one of these games though. Ratchet & Clank Ripped Apart, that's a solid game that I really liked and thoroughly enjoyed. It's not like the deepest experience in the world or anything like that, but it's short, it's, you know, tight. And between like your melee attacking and going around and fluid motion and then doing all your shooting and stuff and being able to do all your upgradable stuff with all the different guns and stuff you did, the story and stuff, while it's not incredibly deep, it's still nice enough. And I just love the fact of how they really took advantage of the PS5. That was like one of their showcase games as well as like Spider-Man Remaster of the reasons what or the things that they are able to accomplish with the PS5 in terms of that solid state drive and them being able to do incredibly fast loading things because like literally when you make that one shot and you're kind of like transported from like one dimension to the other like the loading was just like instantaneous this is little things like that I really enjoyed and the fact that how they are able to go between like their cinematic cutscenes and put that right into the gameplay it just never feels like you're kind of breaking the immersion from it and that's just one of the things I really love to appreciate Insomniac games with the games that they do it's not just within Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. This also plays over to like Spider-Man um, Remastered because honestly, that game felt so good as going through and web swinging from, you know, from building to building with all of your different abilities that you're able to go through and unlock the story, all the different villains that were up in there, all the nods and stuff they managed to tie in with the Marvel Universe, um, with Spider-Man's foes and things of that nature though. It was just a really good experience. I can't even say much more to that though. And literally they were so good, they released that game in 2018 and turned around and remastered their sucker for 2020 just to kind of get their hands kind of, you know, in the pool. Cause you know, you don't want to kind of uh, jump into the pool, you know, like, just straight out and stuff. You didn't like clean your body or nothing like that. Like you gotta get in those showers and get all that stuff off of you and stuff like that though. But they managed to warm themselves up with the PS5, managed to drop a remaster for it real quickly in 2020, along with dropping out Miles Morales, which, oh my gosh, that one's really good too. Not nearly as long as like the runtime for it, for like the hours that you can put into the game in comparison to like Spider-Man Remaster. But it's a really tight experience. Story's about roughly about 20 hours or so. And then seeing all the different changes they were able to do with Miles in this game, adding all the different electrical abilities and things of that nature, it's just really nice. And I was like, I don't know. Insomnia just has that touch with the PS5 though. And it's just kind of crazy the fact that they're able to pull all of this mess off and not really have any hurdles or anything else that is really kind of holding them back because literally, and I already mentioned this like quite a few times already though, but in like in terms of all the stuff that's been recently came out from Insomniac Games, we can look at it from the year by year standpoint as well. Cause in 2018, Spider-Man, you know, the original one that came out in 2018, they got acquired in 2019. 2020, he had Miles Morales as well as Spider-Man Remaster drop out in 2020. 2021, you had Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart that dropped. 2022, Spider-Man and Miles Morales, they both went to PC. 2023, you have Marvel Spider-Man 2 that's going to drop out later in the fall and Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart dropping out on PC. And at some point, we'll have Marvel's Wolverine. Now, literally, you can't look at much of any other studios in the PlayStation lineup and literally not look at them and be like, they were able to drop something out when it's a remaster, a drop on the PS5, or maybe drop on the PC. They're basically doing something almost every single year. You don't see that with a lot of other PlayStation Studios. They literally been carrying Sony during this PS5 generation. Look back to that PlayStation showcase and literally there was a few handful of first party studio things from them in terms of like their live service games, including some that had like title cards that we didn't even know much about though. But outside of that, if it weren't for Spider-Man 2 being up in that showcase, literally I think even more people would be upset with that showcase. Me, my, me personally. I was still upset with that showcase. 
because literally I like, what is it, Metal Gear Solid 3, Delta. I mean, I love that. I love the fact we have Spider-Man 2 gameplay. It was literally like one of the few games that showcased off a good amount of gameplay. Most other things was just like trailers and stuff. And that's a whole topic for another day, though. But literally, Spider-Man 2 and with Insomniac Games at the helm of this, they've been carrying the PS5. I don't know how many other ways I can basically word this mess, though. But they're the masters at their own craft. Literally, that might be one of the best acquisitions that Sony has done with a company in comparison to all their other studios. Insomniac Games just know what they're doing. Now, on the Nintendo side of things, let me go ahead and talk to you about my boys over there at Monolith Soft. Because literally, this company got acquired in 2007. And for most people out there, they're widely known, especially for the Xenoblade Chronicles series because they've been pumping a lot of Xenoblade games out during the Nintendo Switch era. But they're not just only known for the Xenoblade stuff because they've been running a lot of support on a whole bunch of other games as well though. But let me go ahead and show you their portfolio because they got a whole lot of games in their stuff. All right, so you can kind of see their portfolio right here. Some of them, they don't have actual images for some of the games that they actually managed to drop. Like they were known for also making like Xenosaga as well though. So they've been doing a lot of stuff like that. They have put some games out there on the PS2 as well. GameCube, DS, and all that stuff though. Mind you, Monolith Soft wasn't acquired by Nintendo until 2007. Hence, we know them for making, you know, the, the series that they're known for the best. That means Inlay Chronicles, which literally that game dropped out in 2010. However, the first game that they actually ran support for for a Nintendo IP game that they're finally recognized underneath that Nintendo umbrella was actually for Super Smash Bros. Brawl because that game actually came out in 2008 and they were acquired in 2007. So it kind of really all started with this. But then, you know, from there, they started working on a whole bunch of Nintendo games since that point, though. So they've been working on Xenoblade Chronicles, you see, and I'm just going to point out the first part of the games, though. But Xenoblade Chronicles, Legend of Zelda, Skyward Sword, um, they did Animal Crossing over there, they did Pikmin 3. They literally did Legend of Zelda Link Between Worlds, which honestly is kind of, it's really interesting. The fact that it's literally called Legend of Zelda Triforce of the Gods over there. Um, you know, the Japanese style though, but also did Xenoblade Chronicles on 3D for the 3DS, Xenoblade X, Splatoon. They started running support for games like that. Um, they also did Happy Home Designer. I, I didn't even know that. And then this is when you got to get into like the Switch era games, because this is where they really started popping and they really started paying dividends though. And they ran support for Breath of the Wild, Splatoon 2, then dropped Xenoblade Chronicles 2 in 2017. So literally both, all three of these games, you know, Breath of the Wild, Splatoon 2, and Xenoblade Chronicles 2, remember that crazy launch for the Nintendo Switch in 2017, all three of those games they worked on in that one single year. Then they did Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Torn of the Golden Country, which was like a DLC expansion thing. They ran support for uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons. Then dropped out Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Then dropped Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Ran support for Splatoon 3. Then dropped out Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Future Redeem, which, oh shoot, that was an experience in and of, in and of itself. And then also did The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, ran support for that game as well. So honestly, gosh dang Monolith Soft, like, there, there are the other ones along with Insomniac Games. Monolith Soft, they're masters of their craft as well though, because literally you can look within this era, just in the Switch era itself, and they literally ran support for like one, two, three, four, five. They literally ran support or dropped their own games for like 10 different games. Like, like, like that's almost unheard of for one single studio to be hopping up a company like that and just solely doing a lot of it by themselves. Yes, Nintendo also has retro studios and they also have next level games and stuff like that. And all those other studios that also does the main work with the Legends of Zelda, the Mario series, etc. though. They have a lot of stuff underneath their belt, but I don't think any company is a hard worker like Monolith Soft. That might be one of the biggest acquisitions that Nintendo has gotten in recent memory that actually is paying them a whole bunch of dividends. I think the most recent one was Next Level Games, the same people that make Luigi's Mansion 3, but I've not seen another company that's managed to run support, but also stick with their bread and butter series with Xenoblade and do all of this work for that company with Nintendo. Because 
man, they're, they're just really good at this mess. And literally, at least with my experience with Monolith Soft, I didn't really get to know him that well until Breath of the Wild, which that was a phenomenal game. Splatoon 2, which that's how I first got into the Splatoon series, and it, it's been a wrap ever since. I've just been, you know, I've just been addicted on the Splatoon series. Like, I had not put in that many hours into a single IP like that. Crazy. I put like over a thousand hours into Splatoon 2. And then turn around and drop Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And that was the game that really got me interested and involved with the works with Monolith Soft and that series. And man, that was like a roller coaster of emotions right there within that one game. I still think Xenoblade Chronicles 2, at least for me personally, I think it's the favorite it's my favorite game out of the whole entire trilogy, out of you know the first, second, and third game, though. It just meant that much with the story and the way how it hit me. Yes, I did shed a little bit of tears at the end of that game but that game really means a lot to me and then of course everything else they did with the series they managed to bring a definitive edition for the first one did three they also did future connected adding some stuff with the first game drop a whole dlc expansion for the second game and then do that dlc stuff for the third one with future redeem like modeling softness is over here cutting they're, they're, i don't know how many cut corners are cutting or something like that though but uh, shoot they're just wizards at this i don't know they just understand the tech so well and then in recent memory everybody in the moment been talking about tears of the kingdom and they've been running support for that game as well though so their portfolio is astonishing i i just don't know a lot of companies out there like this one same thing like insomniac games that's able to do that much work for their single you know first party big umbrella for them like that like it's just oh my gosh i don't, I don't want to be like a broken record though but it, it's just crazy it's just crazy I got just looking at all these games. I was like, and I, I, for the most part, every single one of those games are just listed out there. I have played it. Maybe Animal Crossing New Horizons is the one I play like the least amount. But you know, during COVID and whatnot, that's that was the hit game. Everybody and their mama was playing that. Like nobody can go outside during that point. So all of those games, I managed to play over there for Nintendo as well. So lately, for me, they're definitely my one of my favorite gaming studios right there in terms of the output, as well as the quality for the games that they always manage to drop out. Hopefully you learned something from at least one of these two gaming studios, and maybe just hearing me talk and say these things about these two studios, maybe makes the question start to pop in your mind, like what is your favorite gaming studios? Yes, you might be a diehard Nintendo fan, you might be a diehard Sony fan, you might be a diehard Xbox fan, but do you really know the gaming studios that actually are the ones and the people, the individuals that actually go through and work behind these games. Do you actually know those gaming studios underneath those three big umbrellas or even the third party umbrellas as well though? Hopefully that question starts to ponder in your mind though, because at least for these two gaming studios right here, they just, just let them cook. They know what they're doing for both of these two consoles respectively for the PS5 as well as the Switch. And they've just been doing game busters. Their games have been selling. They've just been doing good. They've been reviewing really well as well. Like I have not experienced any bad games from these two companies. They just know what they're doing though. But yeah, that's basically all I wanted to go through and talk about here in this video. But y'all gotta let me know down in the comment section down below. What are your favorite gaming studios from any of these major companies, whether it be a Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft, maybe it's from Capcom, maybe it's from Square Enix or whatnot though just let me know all of your favorites down in the comment section down below but that's going to basically do it in terms of today's video though so if you really like it make sure you go ahead and hit that like button go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that bell to stay up to date on all things video game related i feel like talking about and discussing so remember y'all until whatever video i make next see y'all